hello welcome to my channel so is this video a bit dumb one might argue yes i however would argue that i don't really have that many people in my life to talk about chainsaw man with and one person commented one single time that i should be an iceberg youtuber um and i also wanted to show off my angel devil cosplay because these wings took so long to make um so iceberg in real life, icebergs are somewhat obviously giant chunks of ice that float around in the ocean. And thanks to science and photography, we know that icebergs, while ranging in size on the surface, always go deeper underneath the water and are bigger than what you would initially think based off of first glance. Also, I know my camera has focus issues as is. I apologize in advance if they're worse in this video because I really don't know how it's going to fare with angel wings and a halo. So, fingers crossed it's not like terrible though. Anyways, this knowledge about icebergs inspired a template that the internet uses for various fandoms or media to kind of rank pieces of information from pretty basic info to something that only those really deep in the fandom would know. So further down the iceberg, the more obscure the knowledge becomes. I'm not a stranger to icebergs, but I am a stranger to making an iceberg, um, but hey, First time for everything. This video is going to be the Chainsaw Man Iceberg. Chainsaw Man is a manga made by Tetsuki Fujimoto that began serialization in 2018, and the anime version of Chainsaw Man is currently releasing its first season. Actually, now that I'm filming this, the first season has already been fully released. When I was writing this, it was currently being released. Uh, which goes to show how long this uh, script took to write. Anyways, in the world of Chainsaw Man, devils are real and are essentially the physical manifestations of a certain fear, and the devil in question grows stronger based on how afraid of it people are. So, you know, headphone devil, probably not going to be very, very strong, but death devil is very much high up there. You get what I'm saying? The story of Chainsaw Man follows 16-year-old Denji, who was a devil hunter for the Yakuza until they betray and kill him, but he is brought back to life by his pet and best friend devil, Pachita, who gives Denji his heart, thus turning Denji into Chainsaw Man, who is then found by the public safety department of devil hunters, and he begins working with them to hunt devils. And that's all I will say without, like, spoiling the story, although if you're watching this, spoilers uh, once we get into the iceberg, so yeah. Chainsaw Man is a story that at the start seems pretty simple and maybe even comes off as immature, but quickly develops into such a really emotional story with several underlying themes and deeper ideas that you realize have actually been there the whole time and have just been written to show more and more as the story develops, similar to the villain themselves. And it's just really good. As you can see, I like it. <laughs> so now that we have gotten some explanation out of the way, this is the Chainsaw Man Iceberg. Before we get too deep into this video though, just really quick, I wanted to give you a little snack for thought because while winter hasn't officially started yet, it's definitely gotten a lot colder. And with this change in weather, I have been thinking about pets. Some of you might know this, but I have a dog named Casper. He is a Husky Pyrenees. So he is completely, absolutely loving this change in weather on our chilly morning walks together. But a lot of other breeds of dogs and just other animals in general aren't so lucky. I'm talking about you. Come here. Hi. This is Casper. So with the weather getting colder and as we get closer to winter, I just wanted to give you some tips to help keep animals safe and comfortable this season. And if you have a big fluffy dog, please still listen to me because just because your dog might not need a sweater doesn't mean that there aren't things that you can do for other animals and your pet as well. Now, just like people, pets cold tolerances vary based on their body fat, activity levels, coats and general health. So I'm not saying that these are super strict rules that every single pet owner has to follow, but just hear me out and adjust accordingly for your pet to be happy and safe. So first off, if you have an older dog or a dog with joint issues or arthritis, I'd recommend shortening walks as they're going to have more difficulty on the cold and ice. And if you have a pet with diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease, or hormonal imbalances, they can also have a hard time regulating their body temperature. So if they're an animal that needs to go outside, just make sure they're not out there for too terribly long 
and if they have a shorter coat, maybe look into getting them a little jacket. I know that it seems like silly or some people say that it's like treating your animal like an accessory. It, it's not, especially with certain breeds. It can really help them, especially if you get, I've seen like dog sized puffer jackets that have like a soft lining on the inside. My friend has one of those for her dog. It's really helpful. And hey, even if you don't have pets, this one applies to you tap on the hood of your vehicle before getting into it and starting it. It's really quick and easy. Please, please do it. It can literally save lives. I've seen way too many horror stories about stray mama cats bringing their babies up under a car and even into the engine because it's warmer and the owner of that vehicle not knowing that they're there and they start the car and unfortunately it can burn these animals to death. And on a separate note, if you have a dog like mine where fur-wise he's equipped for the cold and doesn't have any pre-existing health issues, you're not in the clear, okay? I'm not in the clear either because something that we can do after walks is check our dog's paws. The cold can cause cracking and bleeding on dog paws, so for that, if your dog is one that can tolerate those little booties, I'm jealous, uh, but I would recommend those. My dog can't do that, and if your dog doesn't like them, then you can also look into getting a paw balm. It's basically aquifer for dogs, and if you don't want to do that, but you have aquifer lying around, aquifer is also just fine, and it also works on noses if they're a little irritated too. I don't want to harp on y'all for too long, so long story short, if you're in a place where the weather has called on you to get your winter coats out of the attic, then make sure you're also keeping an eye on your pets since you're not the only one that has needs, but you are the only one that's able to verbalize them in a language that other people can understand and they aren't able to do that even though they do have their ways. So point is, just watch out for them. And thank you for listening and let's get back into the video. Okay, now it's the Chainsaw Man iceberg, sorry. <laughs> so when making my iceberg, I found three icebergs made uh, for Chainsaw Man and I combined them to make my one larger iceberg because I liked certain points from each of these icebergs and I just wanted to combine them and also I wanted to make my own, you know, I didn't want to like completely rip someone off. Um, but crediting these creators of those three icebergs I used, obviously. Um, this one was made by Reddit user 7gil-shark. This one was made by Reddit user MrHTuberYT. And this one was made by Reddit user ScaryMonsters721. So let's begin with our first layer, the sky. The sky is like the most basic of basic knowledge. Like if you've never even heard of Chainsaw Man or just know a tiny bit about it, this one is like, for you. So the first entry is Pachita. Pachita is the main character, Denji's pet devil dog thing. Uh, he is the chainsaw devil before Denji becomes Chainsaw Man. Denji meets Pachita when he is told by the Yakuza that Denji is now responsible for repaying his father's debts since his dad did that. I don't want to get demonetized. This took too long to work on. He did this to himself. Well, technically he like did that to himself. H-U-N-G, I think. No, he didn't. Whatever. It was S-U-I-C-I... No. S-U-I-C-I-D-E. -I, -I, I was right the first time and I doubted myself. Anyways, Denji and Pachita meet at points of weaknesses for the both of them and they make a deal to help each other out and they become best friends, sort of like a boy and his pet dog. And when Denji is betrayed by the Yakuza and on the brink of death, Pachita kind of gives his life to save Denji by conjoining together and making Denji the Chainsaw Man hybrid, with Pachita now being Denji's heart. Also, I feel like I should have said this at first, uh, I am so sorry if any of this pronunciation is wrong. I would like to think it's right, but also, I'm a southerner. <laughs> I might say some things wrong. Anyways, next up is Kobeni memes. Uh, Kobeni is a character in Chainsaw Man. She's one of my favorite characters. She's a devil hunter in the public safety department. And if you are into anime or manga, then you might have seen some of these memes about her or of her and not known what was up with that. But you're welcome because I'm about to tell you what's up with that. Um, this point is kind of self-explanatory. People meme Kobeni, some because they don't like her, some because they do, and some because they really like her. I'm looking at whoever is responsible for the sloppy BJ devil meme, which is arguably the most common meme other than the ones of her dancing. Um, but yeah, she's just a meme and she has a lot of memes made about her. <laughs> Next up, Denji is horny. H-O-R-N-Y. 
I'm not risking demonetization for you. Love you. This one is kind of self-explanatory. It's just a straight up personality trait of Denji's since he is a 16 year old boy born and raised in poverty and isolation for most people. So he is driven by his desire for a female companion and motivated several times throughout the story by promises of kisses or cop and feels. Next up, let's do Makima simps since it's kind of in the same realm, but instead of Makima being the H word, it's everyone else for Makima. Makima is like the lead devil hunter in public safety, kind of. She's not like the commander of it, um, but she is one of the higher ups. And she's also the one that finds Chainsaw Man and Denji is in love with her. And also spoiler, she's the villain of part one and a damn good one. She is also hot. Yeah, I'll say it. I'm not a simp myself, but I see the appeal. She's pretty and terrifying. And that's all I look for in girls. It's also apparently what a lot of people look for in girls as Makima has a lot of simps and that's really it for this point. <laughs> Moving on, the next entry in the sky is Tatsuki Fujimoto, who for the sake of not over explaining, since Fujimoto comes up several times in the iceberg, I will just say he is the author of the manga, the mangaka. Um, so, and he's just a totally normal guy and we will have nothing to unpack about him. <laughs> Anyways, next up is no. Um, and I'm so sorry to have to do this. Uh, I have no idea what this is referencing. I read through the Reddit thread of the iceberg that this point originated from, and nobody seems to know what this is referencing, and the creator of the iceberg wouldn't elaborate. I'm assuming it's an important piece of dialogue, maybe like a turning point for Denji. He does have a few monologues in the manga, but I don't remember them specifically enough to know if they're was, you know, a no uttered that was like super important. It could also totally be unimportant, but something that the creator of the iceberg just like thought was important because the iceberg creators all had different pieces of info that varied on importance. And some I personally didn't find important, but that's just me. Um, so sorry. I don't know what no means. If you know what no means, please comment down below. <laughs> so with that, let's move on to the final point in the sky. Denji adopted Nayuta because he sees himself in her. So Nayuta is the reincarnation of the control devil who was Makima who died at the end of part one of Chainsaw Man. Nayuta is a little girl from China that was discovered and Kishibe, another public safety agent who was also Makima's mentor, takes her and brings her to Denji for him to care for and raise because if other governments found out about her, it would be another Makima situation. Now. Obviously, for the sake of plot, Denji was always going to take in Nayuta because that just, he just had to, you know, like it was just written to be. But ignoring that and just looking at it in the world of Chainsaw Man, Denji could have said no, since he himself is just a teenager and he hunts devils for a living and also wants to start going to school like a normal kid. But he took Nayuta regardless. And that's because, as the point says, Denji sees himself in her. For most of his life, he had no family and had to learn to navigate the dangerous and confusing world they live in. And he just wanted a normal, happy life and have normal, happy relationships. And relationships are something that the control devil, AKA Makima, but now Nayuta, really craves, but can't attain without using her power. Like she's never had an equal relationship. Uh, but she's always really wanted one, and so has Denji. So he sees himself in Nayuta, which is why he agrees to care for her. And that is the end of the sky level. So we are now moving on to layer two, the tip of the iceberg. This is for the people that are maybe anime onlys. They haven't read the manga, or maybe they are a manga reader, but they aren't too far into it yet. Basically, it's info bites that aren't very obscure, but also aren't things that someone with no knowledge of Chainsaw Man would know. Starting with part two. So Chainsaw Man is an ongoing story with major arcs of the story being divided into parts. So part one was chapters one through 97 or volumes one through 11 of the manga, and it's the public safety arc. Part two is ongoing currently, and it is the school or academy arc where Denji is going through school for the first time as a normal kid, but obviously there's devil shenanigans happening at the same time. I don't know why I just did this. <laughs> Truth be told, I haven't read part two yet. Um, I am very prone to motion sickness, and for some reason, reading manga 
or comics like on my phone makes me uh, motion sick. So I have to wait for the first volume of part two to come out in America. I already have it back ordered. It's coming out the day after my birthday. But anyways, I know very basic details about part two, but I also am going at the risk of spoiling things for myself while doing this iceberg, um, which I did spoil some things for myself. So give me a like, because I spoiled it for myself. Um, so anyways, next up is the world of Chainsaw Man is stuck in a Cold War scenario. Chainsaw Man takes place in 1997, and we know this because in one of the panels of the manga, when it's talking about the gun devil, which is like a big bad in part one, um, it says that the date is a day in 1997. Now, very small brief bit of world history. The Soviet Union was a transcontinental country formed in 1922 that played a very big part in the Cold War, which lasted from 1947 to 1991, ending with the disbandment of the Soviet Union. And I bring that up because the Soviet Union is still active in Chainsaw Man, despite Chainsaw Man taking place at the beginning of 1997, which is six years after the Cold War would have ended. So long story short, Chainsaw Man is set in an alternate timeline where the Cold War never ended. This doesn't have an impact on the story necessarily, it's just a bit of an easter egg, I guess. Next up, comparisons to JJK. JJK stands for Jujutsu Kaisen, which is another manga slash anime. JJK isn't written by Fujimoto, but both JJK and Chainsaw Man both get released to Shonen Jump, which is basically a manga magazine publication type thing. And JJK and Chainsaw Man have been compared as the point states uh, because they're pretty similar. Like I actually started reading JJK and I immediately picked up on it. The plots themselves are different, like within the details, but the characters are similar, especially the main protagonists, Denji of Chainsaw Man and Yuji of JJK. In terms of age, lack of parents, both have this one big interaction with the supernatural element that changes the course of their lives, their relationships with the other characters, etc. Some people do argue that the similarities between Chainsaw Man and JJK are just common tropes that can be seen in several series. And while I don't think that's wrong, I also don't think that that invalidates the similarities that people find. Plus the authors of Chainsaw Man and JJK are actually friends and it's been said that they pull inspirations from each other. So yes, there are similarities between Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen. Next point is Studio MAPPA. MAPPA is an animation studio that was formed in 2011. And while they aren't just now becoming a big successful studio or anything, they have gotten more popular in these past few years due to their work on Kakegurui, Jujutsu Kaisen and the final season of Attack on Titan, just to name a few. Um, also, like several others. They have been doing a lot of anime recently. And they are the studio that animates the Chainsaw Man anime. So that's that. That is Studio Mappa. Next up, Chainsaw Man is set in 1997. Uh, we basically touched on that. It's in this tier because it's not explicitly said at the start of the story. You gotta like get into it a little bit to catch it. No, it's not. <laughs> I don't know how I'm just now realizing that it's not, but it can't be because the gun devil attacked in 1997, but we know that when the gun devil attacked, Aki was a child. It's not 1997. It has to be like the early 2000s. I cannot believe I didn't catch that. Wow. <laughs> It's not 1997. I'm a liar. Next up is film references. So in the Chainsaw Man anime's opening, there are a lot of references to different pieces of media, uh, mainly movies and specifically a mix of American and Japanese classics and horrors. In the intro, there are references to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, Sadako vs. Kayako, No Country for Old Men, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, Don't Look Up, Jacob's Ladder, Constantine, The Big Lebowski, and Fight Club. That was a lot. <laughs> and this isn't a movie, but I'm not not mentioning the Evangelion reference because it's one of my favorite animes of all time. There's also a reference to Neon Genesis Evangelion. That's the main thing that people are referring to in the context of references, but the anime intro isn't the only time references can be seen in Chainsaw Man. The manga references several pieces of Japanese literature and classic art, as well as more film references like, again, 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but also random things like Sharknado. And this is probably a good segue to talk about the next point on this tip of the iceberg, Fire Punch, which is also referenced a lot in the manga, which is why it's a good segue. <laughs> Fire Punch is the first serialized manga by Tetsuki Fujimoto, who, if you remember, is the author of Chainsaw Man. Fire Punch seems to have an influence on Chainsaw Man in both tone and literal references to Fire Punch within Chainsaw Man, but Chainsaw Man is seen as the more refined manga by people who have read both. And for full transparency, I haven't read Fire Punch yet, but I plan on it. But people who have read both Fire Punch and Chainsaw Man claim that Fire Punch is less restrained and has heavier themes and shocking story beats, while Chainsaw Man is better written, easier to digest, and has more balance in comparison. And with that, let's move on to the final tip of the iceberg, number one on Manga Plus. This is a quicker slash more self-explanatory one. Manga Plus is a free app and website for people to read manga. It's not the same as Shonen Jump, but it's similar. It's a reading service. And Chainsaw Man is the number one manga on Manga Plus's list, and it has been since around July of this year when it took the spot from One Piece. And if you aren't into manga or anime, this is kind of a big deal because One Piece is one of the best-selling mangas of all time. So for Chainsaw Man to be the most viewed manga on Manga Plus and to overthrow One Piece is telling of how popular Chainsaw Man has gotten. And that is the end of the tip of the iceberg tier. We are now moving on to the next tier, entering the waters. To gauge the depth of this section, I would say that this is knowledge you would have if you've fully read at least part one of the manga and you're caught up on the anime and you might engage in some conversations about Chainsaw Man on Twitter. We aren't that deep yet, all right? <laughs> the first entry in this tier is The Four Knights. Um, this is in reference to the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, which are figures in the Christian faith. In the world of Chainsaw Man, these Four Horsemen exist as devils, and that's all I'm saying at the moment because this comes back around in the later bit of this video, um, but there's your surface level knowledge The Four Horsemen are canon in Chainsaw Man. Moving on to the next point, the origin of Nayuda. We talked about Nayuda earlier. She's the reincarnation of the control devil. Uh, remember that? I would hope so. So Nayuda is named and designed after the protagonist of another work by Fujimoto. As I said earlier, Fujimoto does only have two serialized mangas, but those aren't his only works. We will be looking more into his one shots and other things later on in this video. But one of those stories is called Yogen no Nayuda. It's a story about a little girl named Nayuda who has an older brother named Kenji who cares for her, obviously similar to how Nayuda in Chainsaw Man is taken in by Denji and he takes on an older brother role and their character designs, I'll put pictures up on the screen, are very similar. Fujimoto references his other works a lot within Chainsaw Man. This is just another cool example of it. Next up is CGI Devils. This is actually a point of contention amongst viewers of Chainsaw Man. Honestly, this is just part of a larger discourse within the anime community about the use of CGI in anime because some people don't mind it and some people really fucking hate it for some reason. I don't think there's a right or wrong take in my opinion. I can get why people don't like CGI depending on its use because it does lower the frame rate and it just kind of looks jarring in comparison to the rest of the show and the scene that it's in. But I also think that it's not a huge deal and not something to like throw a whole show away over, which believe it or not, chain some people that like watch Chainsaw Man did stop watching when they saw CGI. Uh, which I don't get because it's MAPPA and they use it kind of a lot. <laughs> so anyways, CGI Devils is in reference to CGI being used to animate some of the devils in Chainsaw Man, specifically fight scenes. And again, this is my personal opinion. I'm going to input it a lot, but who cares? <laughs> the CGI in Chainsaw Man isn't that bad, especially in comparisons to CGI used in other animes like Attack on Titan season four. I'm sorry. People have argued that the CGI is too jarring for them, and if that's your prerogative, then that's your prerogative. I just disagree personally. Next up is Kobeni's car. This is more of a meme than anything else. There's a part in Chainsaw Man part one where Kobeni and Power are in Kobeni's car and Power hits and K words a guy with Kobeni's car. And it's just a funny thing that people have memed and made jokes about. And fun fact, in the first Chainsaw Man popularity poll, 
Kobeni's car ranked seventh most popular character. And in that same poll, Kobeni herself ranked eighth. So <laughs> moving on, Power's inconsistent color palette. So Power is a fiend character in Chainsaw Man and a fiend is a devil that's taken over the body of a corpse. So it's, they're like weaker and in a human's body. It's different from being possessed, just for reference. Um, and Power, aside from being my girlfriend, is blonde. Or, or pink. Or ginger? Ever since the anime started releasing episodes back in October, there's been talks in the fandom about how Power's hair changes colors kind of a lot. She's supposed to be like a blonde that's kind of pink toned, but in some scenes she's fully yellow blonde or she's more pinkish depending on the lighting. It can also look white or orangey. And I know again that part of it is lighting, but the inconsistency isn't just the lighting. If it was, I don't think this would even be something that people talked about. And it's not even just the anime. Fan arts of her have her hair ranging from super pale blonde to like bubblegum pink. In my opinion, this is Power's hair color. Feel free to agree or disagree. Next up, Aldo wasn't Halloweened. So Aldo is one of the three American private devil hunting brothers that are antagonists in the international assassins arc of part one of the manga. So there is a character in Chainsaw Man called Cosmo and she is the Cosmos fiend and one of the girlfriends to the antagonist Quan Chi, who is a hybrid as well as a devil hunter from China. And Cosmo only ever says one word, Halloween. And in a fight between Santa Claus, long story, not the actual Santa, um, and Quan Chi and her girlfriends, Santa gets Halloweened. So when a character is Halloween, they are telepathically taken into Cosmos' mind. Um, Cosmos, as I said, is the Cosmos fiend, meaning she is the fear of infinite knowledge and of the cosmos and outer space. Basically, Cosmo has all of the information about the whole universe inside of her head. And when you are Halloweened, she makes you absorb all of that knowledge, which humans and assumably fiends and weaker devils can't mentally handle holding all of that information and understanding. So having it puts them into a semi catatonic state where they can only say and think the word Halloween. So now that you know what it means to be Halloweened, what is the point Aldo wasn't Halloweened getting at? Well, Aldo, as mentioned, is one of three brothers, Aldo, Joey, and the third who remains unnamed. They play a big part in the International Assassin's Arc, an arc in which, as the title suggests, several mercenaries from around the world travel to Japan to try and claim a bounty on Denji. This leads into a big fight scene, and by the end of it, the unnamed brother has been dead because fun fact, he's the guy that power hit with Kobeni's car. And the other brother, Joey, has been killed by Yoshida, a private devil hunter that's helping the public safety department defend Denji. Um, and Aldo is last seen repeating the word Halloween. But the theory is that Aldo wasn't actually Halloweened and is just pretending he was so he isn't killed since he doesn't have the same like empty spaced out facial expressions as everyone else that was Halloweened. That was a lot of exposition for not a very long theory, but now you know. And that leads us to the final point in the entering the waters tier. Uh, the seven hybrids were Makima's dogs. So Makima has seven pet huskies and in the world of Chainsaw Man, a hybrid, as I think I mentioned, is a devil-human hybrid, a human that can take on the form of a devil. There are currently eight known hybrids in the Chainsaw Man universe, those being Chainsaw, Katana, Bomb, Crossbow, Spear, Flamethrower, Longsword, and Whip. They're all weapons. <laughs> and the theory is that Makima's seven dogs are the hybrids that aren't Denji, and she is keeping them under her control as the control devil until she needs to use them in her plans and that she intends to do the same to Denji. And a little bread trail for this is how she refers to him as a dog when they meet and she tells him that he either needs to say yes or woof because she doesn't need a disobedient dog, um, which is an idea that comes back in the later half of part one after Makima's identity has been revealed and Denji is somewhat her hostage. And this theory about the hybrids being her dogs is a 
apparently canon, but I don't know how. I was looking around for info on this, and when I was looking at the Reddit post where this theory stemmed from, a lot of people came back to the post after like a period of time and were like, oh my god, this guy was right. That's so crazy. The future rules. Easter egg for you, the future rules. Um, but nobody was giving context to when or how this was confirmed. Um, I honestly could just be forgetting that it was mentioned in part one because I haven't read it in a few months. But yes, apparently this is canon. Makima's dogs are the seven hybrids that aren't Denji. So with that, let's move down to the next tier, deeper in the water. Very creative names, don't you think? The first point in this tier is that Reze and Quen Chi are still alive, just brainwashed. So I've already talked about Quen Chi, but quick introduction to Reze since this is the first time she's being mentioned. Reze is a girl that's introduced in the second half of part one who has a romantic interest in Denji and is trying to convince him to leave public safety and be with her and live a normal life and go to school like normal teenagers. But it turns out that she was trying to trick him and is actually the bomb devil hybrid. Now, Grayson, what do you mean they're brainwashed? Well, one of the last really big battles at the end of part one of the manga is Denji versus Makima. However, at this point, Makima has several devils and fiends under her control that she is using in battle. There's some discourse about whether or not these people are dead or not while under Makima's control because several of them were killed previous to this point in the manga, but it also depends because hybrids and fiends like Denji can heal themselves and are either partially or fully immortal based on which, you know, particular character we're talking about. So fans have gone back and forth between whether or not Reze and Quen Chi are actually dead or if they are alive and just brainwashed under Makima's control. And as it says, this point in the iceberg claims that they are alive since hybrids are similar to Denji and the fiends in the way that they can heal through consuming blood. But what's interesting to consider is that technically, if they were alive, they would not be under Makima's control anymore since Makima is dead and once a devil is dead, all of their power leaves the world, basically. So I don't know, food for thought there. Maybe they'll come back at a different point. I honestly don't know why they would, but maybe they will. Next up is Fujimoto's Twitter. So I told you I wasn't going to dwell too much on Fujimoto when I introduced him because he was going to come back later in the video. Um, and we are now later in the video. <laughs> Fujimoto is a bit of a weird dude. Weird isn't meant to be insulting necessarily, but like, He's kind of weird. <laughs> Fujimoto had a Twitter that he made somewhat recently called Ashitaka underscore Eva. Uh, that account doesn't exist anymore, but it's okay because that's not the account I'm talking about. And it's not the account that really any Chainsaw Man fan is talking about when they reference Fujimoto's Twitter. The Twitter that they are referencing is the account Nagayama underscore Koharu. And this account is still active and it's run by Fujimoto. However, on this account, he basically role played as his eight year old sister named Koharu for a long time, um, which is already odd, but also Koharu doesn't exist. She's completely made up. <laughs> he would promote his own work and he would say like, this is my brother's manga, <laughs> read it. <laughs> and he didn't like tell anyone he was doing this. So when his editor found the account, he brought it to Fujimoto and was like, hey, I think we have a case to like sue for impersonation. And Fujimoto was like, no, that's me. <laughs> At this point, I'm fairly certain he's tweeting as himself now, but also Google Translate doesn't translate Japanese that well, so I could be wrong. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's just kind of a meme in the community of like, hey, that's funny and weird. What's up? Next point, Aki was destined to become the gun fiend. <sighs> Typing that into my script physically hurt, FYI. So context, Aki is a devil hunter in public safety who is assigned to be Denji's partner after Makima brings Denji to work in public safety. Aki hates devils because the gun devil, which is again, the big bad before Makima is revealed as the big bad, uh, the gun devil killed Aki's entire family, which is what motivated him to join public safety to hunt and kill the gun devil. So he hates all devils, he hates all fiends, anything devil related. But as Aki continues working with and living with Denji, their dynamic goes from this guy having to babysit this annoying hybrid to his own dismay to more of a brotherly pairing. And Aki begins to see Denji very similarly to Aki's younger brother, who was killed by the gun devil, as I said. So in an absolute 
heart-shattering turn of events, Aki is killed and possessed by the gun devil, making him the gun fiend where he and Denji have to fight to the death and Denji kills him like for real, for real. <laughs> Side note, I was in so much disbelief when I read that for the first time. Like I straight up was like, no, like he's gonna come back. Like there's no way, there, there's no way that they're gonna do Chainsaw Man without Aki. Um, I was wrong. <laughs> was wrong. But anyways, as the point in the iceberg states, Aki was destined to become the gun fiend. I don't think that's confirmed to be canon, and I couldn't find an explanation about this theory, but my best interpretation is that aside from the obvious, which is like, yeah, Fujimoto probably had that plan from the very beginning, or at least pretty early on, but ignoring that, aside from that, I think the idea that Aki was destined to become the gun fiend stems from the ideas of fear, how you can be consumed by it, and how the fear of something can lead you to becoming the thing you were afraid of. You've become the very thing you swore to destroy. <laughs> Granted, Aki comes off more as angry and vengeful than fearful, but he's also clearly traumatized by the murder of his family, which happened when he was a child. So even though he is a hardened devil hunter at this point, he acts and thinks in ways that stem back to that childlike fear and trauma. And there's also the whole concept of how devils form in the Chainsaw Man universe, which if you don't remember, is that the more something like a concept is feared, then the stronger the devil of that concept will be. So we can make that connection of the fear within Aki manifesting into him becoming the thing that he feared. I'm not saying that that's the only way or the right way to interpret that he was destined to become the gun fiend. That's just the connection that I made. And with that, we will move on to the next point, Denji's mother. Denji's mom isn't present in the manga because she's dead. Uh, it's said pretty early on that she died due to a heart condition that Denji seems to have inherited because before he becomes the Chainsaw Man, he is seen coughing up blood and he mentions how his mom did that. If I had to guess, I would say that maybe this point is referring to like the little Easter egg that becoming a devil cured Denji of this inherited disease because he's never seen coughing up blood again unprovoked as he had before. This could also be referring to a little bit of lore on Denji's parents, since it's been said that Denji's parents were immigrants that came from a Christian country. Um, I couldn't find anything to back that up though. And this point was mentioned in an iceberg that I used for reference. However, nobody in the comments could provide a source for that. And the creator of the iceberg didn't give any additional info. So I guess take that with a grain of salt, um, but yeah. Moving on. Next up is the original power. This is referring to the claim that power before becoming a fiend was a 13 to 15 year old girl who died in the countryside. Is the halo distracting y'all? Cause honestly, I love it. I love how much it moves. <laughs> this isn't canon from what I could find, but it does seem plausible based on what we've seen from Power's origins in the manga and of course anime, when she is trying to get her cat Meowy back from the bat devil. Before Meowy is kidnapped, catnapped. Power is seen roaming around plains and forests hunting and she eats like a bear and a cow and wild animals, right? And the night that Meowy gets taken, she seems to be laying on either an isolated house in the countryside or a barn. It's like the only building in view. And after the Bat Devil tells Power that she can get Meowy back if she brings the Bat Devil a human, she has to run like run into the city a long way so we can tell that she is in a more rural area with less people. And as for the 13 to 15 year age estimate, I would assume that people have thought that because of Power's levels of maturity and the simplicity of the things that she's driven by. I kind of always assumed she was more like 16 to 17, maybe even 18, but devils and fiends do age differently than humans, so it's hard to tell. Plus we don't know how long Power's been a fiend. So when she died very well, could have been 13 to 15. It's just not been confirmed as canon from what I could find. Next up is Darkness Devil Spells Makima's Name. This is referencing a panel in volume eight of the manga when the gang and also some antagonists have been taken to hell by the Darkness Devil who removes their arms. And in this panel, some say that the arms which are floating above the characters in the air spell out Makima. And y'all, I'm gonna be honest, this might be a stretch. <laughs> I'm mixed. I'm mixed. Because looking at the panel, I could see how you could see it if you were looking for it. But I have it right here. 
if it was actually spelling out Makima, this would be a second I. The idea is that this is an M, this is an A, K, I, oh wait, sorry, that's the extra I. Um, so Maki, E, M, this is supposed to be an M, I guess, and then this is the A. Would you have thought that if I hadn't pointed it out? Probably not. I don't know. Maybe I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I personally wouldn't have, okay? I've also seen someone say that when you combine the position of the arms with the positions of the characters, like their sleeves and the way that they're bent, it spells out Makima is evil. And I'm sorry, I'm calling Cap. I, I saw their explanation and it just looks like a stretch. Obviously no shade to that person. I'm not saying that they're like dumb or something for thinking that. I just really don't see it. I don't like doubt the genius of Fujimoto or whatever. It very well could be intentional. And if it is, then I do think that's cool. It's just not something I can look at and 100% believe it to be true. But that is just personal opinion. Take a, don't take a shot, actually. I was gonna say take a shot every time I say personal opinion, but I think I say it a lot. Let me find out. Opinion. Oh, I only say it seven times. If y'all can handle seven shots, um, then take a shot every time I say opinion. <laughs> Anyways, so with that, let's move on to the next point in the iceberg. Quan Chi and Kishibe extra chapter. We've already introduced Quan Chi, but I don't think we've mentioned Kishibe up until this point. So for those who don't know, Kishibe, I did mention him. Why did I write that in the script? I mentioned Kishibe already, but anyways, uh, he is the current captain of Special Division 4, which is Denji and all of our faves' division of public safety, and he is one of, if not the strongest devil hunter. So back to this extra chapter. It's not a chapter, but there are extra panels in Volume 8 of the Chainsaw Man manga. I... which I coincidentally have. It actually was kind of a coincidence. I kind of forgot that it was this volume. Yeah, wow, I have them. That's so cool. Anyway, these panels show a mini timeline of Kishibe and Quan Chi's relationship. Since they are two of the earliest devil hunters, they worked together for nine years. And during those years, Kishibe expressed romantic interest in Quan Chi, which she rejected. And in the ninth year of their friendship, she tells Kishibe that she thinks she's interested in women. Those are the extra panels. It's just a nice little tidbit. Uh, and with that, we are now at the last point in this layer of the iceberg, Bonesaw Guy. So this is referencing a Chainsaw Man Easter egg in the My Hero Academia manga. I haven't read or seen My Hero Academia, Maybe I'll get around to it at some point. It's just never seemed all that enticing to me. Anyway, sorry. But from what I've gathered, there is a chapter in the My Hero manga uh, where there's like a panel that has a bunch of characters in it and Denji can be seen in that panel. It's just like a cute little Easter egg. However, to avoid copyright issues, whenever the sixth season of the My Hero anime dropped, Denji from the manga, that little panel, can be seen in the trailer. However, they changed the color of his shirt and they gave him doll-like joints and put a bone saw on his head instead of a chainsaw. So bone saw guy is just the generic brand chainsaw man. And that rounds out this layer of the iceberg. So let's get into the next layer, skillfully titled layer five. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Starting off with Makima's true age. So at this point, we might all know this by now, but devils and fiends do not age in the same way that humans do, so they usually tend to look younger than they actually are. And many, many characters in this series don't ever have their ages explicitly mentioned. I want to say Denji, Kobeni, and Arai are the only devil hunters that actually state their age. So similar to the previous point about Power's age, people speculate about the ages of many different characters, in this instance, Makima. Makima's age is, again, never explicitly defined, but there are context clues in the manga people have used to guesstimate her age. The main one being that Makima is able to remember details from World War II, um, and not like reciting things from history books, but her actual memories from the time, which has led people to estimate that she's about 70 years old. However, there's also a theory that Makima is actually as old as human history since she is again the control devil. And while it could be argued that this doesn't actually apply to Makima since the control devil can reincarnate as another person, 
It's also never said that the control devil has died in the past, and it's honestly implied that she hasn't. So Makima's true age, despite her human body being, I want to say it's late 20s or even early 30s, she could be around 70 or maybe even as old as human history. Got it? Good. Moving on. Next point is Yuko is Denji. I'ma be honest with y'all, I simply don't get this one. The creator of the iceberg didn't explain it and none of the comments on the iceberg have given any clue as to what this could mean. Uh, Yuko is a character in part two of Chainsaw Man, AKA the Academy arc, which as I've already mentioned, I haven't read yet, um, but Yuko is a student in the school that Denji is attending and she is in the devil hunting club at the school and she has a contract with the justice devil. No, I'm not cutting this out to scratch my eye. This is my room and it's my eye. The closest thing I could find to Yuko is Denji is a conspiracy theory about Yuko being Denji's sister. Since we don't know his parents' activities prior to the series, Yuko also wields an ax as her main weapon, similar to how Denji did before he became the Chainsaw Man. Um, and they apparently have similar personalities. This theory is unlikely since it's been said that Yuko mentions her parents being killed by a devil, which would rule them out as having the same father um, and would more than likely rule out them having the same mother since Denji claims his mom died of heart disease. I say more than likely in terms of his mom because we never actually see Denji's mom. So there is a chance that she didn't actually die from heart disease, but that would be a weird misdirect in my opinion. But that is the closest thing I could find to Yuko being Denji. If you have any ideas about what that could mean, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, but yeah, let's move on. Chainsaw Man fought and killed the Nazi devil. This is canon. Straight up, this is canon. So whenever a devil gets killed, it is sent to hell and it can come back. But whenever a devil is killed and eaten in hell by the Chainsaw Devil, uh, that devil's entire name and existence is gone and forgotten by the people of Earth. And not just the devil, but the concept that the devil was based on. So if there was a remote devil and the chainsaw devil ate the remote devil, remotes would stop existing and we would have no recollection of a remote. So the chainsaw devil, before combining with Denji, used to be kind of a menace and would eat devils in hell a lot, one of which was the Nazi devil, which we know because Makima mentions that she is the only one that recalls World War II and Nazis, implying that they have been eaten. Um, and I'm gonna... I'm gonna explain this later in the video, but just before someone comments about it, Makima can remember, because spoiler alert, Makima is one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse and they can remember the things that Denji erases. Okay, anyway. So yeah, the chainsaw devil killed the Nazi devil. Good. <laughs> Next up, bomb devil design change. So Reze is the bomb devil hybrid and she looks like this for reference. This is unfortunately another one where the creator of the iceberg didn't give any context. And when I was looking around for this design change in question, I couldn't find anything. I thought that this might be in reference to some of the early character design sketches that Fujimoto posted to Twitter, but none of them were of Reze. So my next best guess would be that this is referencing Reze's outfit change uh, that happens in the bomb devil form, because in some panels she's seen in her bomb form while still wearing her shorts and button down shirt. And in others, she is just wearing underwear. This isn't really a change in design. It's because of the fact that she uses herself as a bomb. And at one point she regrows her body from her head. And she just didn't like grow the clothes back other than underwear, I guess. <laughs> Again, though, that's just my best guess as to what it's referring to. If someone else has a different idea, leave it down below. Next up, Arai is the violence fiend. I've only mentioned Arai, I think once by name before this point. So for those that don't know, he is one of the public safety newbies like Kobeni. He is her partner and he takes a bullet for her whenever the Yakuza have their planned attack on public safety. So Arai is dead. <laughs> and the violence fiend is a fiend, obviously. And he is super powerful because naturally violence is a pretty big fear and fiends are naturally nerfed a little bit because of their human body. However, even as a fiend, violence is still pretty powerful. So to basically keep him in check, um, the public safety department has him wear this witch doctor-esque mask that releases like 
a poison to keep him kind of weak in a way. And we don't know exactly what violence looked like as a normal human, but we do have a panel that gives us a pretty good idea. And that idea looks like a rye. Do I? God, volume eight is really awesome. This is in volume eight too. It's close. I can feel it coming. I feel it coming. Can I shut the fuck up? Okay. <laughs> it's this one. That's him. And in another panel, Violence is explaining that he does have certain memories from when he was a human. He can't remember how he died, but he remembers that Makima saved him. And in Chainsaw Man lore, if a corpse is pretty intact when the person becomes a fiend, then they will retain some of their memories from being a human. And Arai dies by a gunshot through the neck, but physically everything else is intact. And we also know that Makima uses the spider devil to collect the intact bodies of devil hunters. So combining that with the fact that in one panel, violence looks a lot like Arai and claims that Makima saved him, and also some smaller details like violence and Kobeni's relationship, since Arai and Kobeni were pretty close, all signs point to Arai being the violence fiend. And that is a theory that I personally subscribe to actually. Next up, Makima is based on a real person. So remember how I said Fujimoto was weird? <laughs> Technically a majority of the female characters in Chainsaw Man are based on one real person, but Makima especially is very representative of this person. But um, Tatsuki Fujimoto is a masochist and he based Makima and several other girl characters on this one girl that bullied him, but he liked <laughs> she bullied him that was a quick one that's it <laughs> moving on why they say halloween this goes back to the cosmos devil and how she makes everyone including herself say halloween we've already gone over why they say halloween but we haven't talked about why they say halloween you know there hasn't been an explanation that's confirmed to be canon from what i could find but in the comments on the iceberg where this point stems from, someone theorized that it was just a misdirect so people don't realize that it's the cosmos fiend. And the creator of the iceberg actually said that that commenter had gotten a lot more of the points right than anyone else. Um, I don't know where this iceberg creator is getting this hidden knowledge, but when I was searching around for answers to this point, this sentiment of it being a cover was echoed a bit. So while it isn't canon, it does seem to be the most plausible. Others have said that it's just because Cosmo likes Halloween or that it relates to cosmic horror, which is the fear of the unknown, like what's lurking in the shadows or under your bed, similar things that might spook little kids. Spook, like spooky, like Halloween. That one is a bit of a stretch for the connection, but I don't want to rule it out entirely. But yeah, Halloween being a misdirect to hide the cosmos fiend's true identity and power is the strongest working theory on why they say Halloween. Next up, Mike the Headless Chicken. So Mike the Headless Chicken is a real chicken from Colorado in the 1940s who was on the chopping block, literally, to be dinner, like a literal head chopping block. But after the ax was swung and the head was chopped, Mike the chicken didn't die. And not just like he stayed alive for a few minutes suffering, like he went on to live a very happy life for 18 more months. It's a pretty well-known story. I remember seeing a documentary about it like years and years ago when I was a little kid. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in Mike, you can Google him. There's actually like a festival for him uh, once a year. Anyways, why am I talking about this headless chicken? because he is what inspired the character Bucky, who is the chicken devil that takes on the form of a headless chicken, who is also the class pet at Denji School. The end, that's it. <laughs> and now we are at the final point in this layer of the iceberg, which is Makima genocided a Polynesian tribe. So angel devil backstory time. Angel has a limited amount of memories for reasons I will explain, but he does remember a coastal village that he lived in for a while and had a sort of found family relationship with them and even had a relationship with one of the girls there. However, in chapter 74, he regains memories that Makima had been suppressing from him and remembers that one day Makima shows up to this beach community and controls Angel to make him touch all of the members of this community, which kills them because touching Angel makes a person's lifespan shortened. I'm not sure where people were able to confirm that this was a Polynesian tribe, but everyone I've seen talk about this point refers to the incident in chapter 74 and refers to the beach community as a Polynesian tribe. 
Either way, Makima used Angel to perform genocide. Super cool and awesome. Um, okay, we have two more layers in this iceberg. Let's power through. We got this. Okay, the next layer in the iceberg is called the bottom of the iceberg because it's the bottom of the iceberg. Not the end, just the bottom. So first point in this layer is Kobeni's contract. So we know some of the contracts that some of the public safety devil hunters have, but not all of them. One of which that we don't know is Kobeni's. And it's been highly speculated as to who she could have a contract with since she, when in action, has like inhuman agility and reflexes. I personally have never thought too much about the devil she is in contract with, but a lot of people have actually speculated that she is in contract with one of the four horsemen, specifically death or hunger. The evidence for these theories is weak, in my opinion, the death devil because she is seemingly able to avoid death in any given situation, and the hunger devil because she loves food. Again, personal opinion, but I think that this is just the excuse people grasped at to back up the idea that they want to be true, which is that Kobeni, this quiet, scared girl, is in contract with one of the toughest devils ever. And not gonna lie, that does sound like a cool concept. There's just not evidence for it. Sorry, there's not. That's not to say it isn't possible that she's in contract with one of them, but be for real. The hunger devil because she likes food. If we were working with that logic, Himeno and Makima would be working with the minor devil since they love my- I'm gonna link an article in the description from Fiction Horizon where they go over the fan theories of which devils Kabeni has a contract with, but it's just more of the well, Kabeni is like this, so therefore the devil must be related to this thing, which is a line of logic that's not repeated for any other Chainsaw Man character that I can think of, so I wouldn't put too much weight into them. Either Fujimoto knows the devil already and is planning a big reveal, or the gag is that he intentionally is keeping it a secret because he doesn't have a devil in mind. Kabeni is just badass because it's fun. And that's a theory that I like. Moving on. Chainsaw Man Erase the Sun. After looking into this, it's kind of more of an inconsistency than a theory, but let me explain. The time and days of the Chainsaw Man universe are kind of weird. For one, there's seemingly no Sunday, which we know because a calendar can be seen in Aki's house in one panel from the manga, and Sunday is just not there. Um, in another panel, there is a sign that can be seen that says metachi, which isn't a real word in Japanese. And it's been theorized that it's meant to say hitachi because he or hi, I'm not sure if it's haitachi or hitachi, but hi, H-I, means uh, sun in Japanese. But the sign was changed because Chainsaw Man ate the sun, maybe. There's also a line where Makima says a particular star that would break children's mind. Uh, leading many to believe that this is about the sun. And honestly, I think that's the best piece of evidence that there is for this theory. But there's also the fact that the bat devil is able to fight in the middle of the day, despite bats being nocturnal. So this has led a bunch of people to believe that the Chainsaw Man universe doesn't have a sun. <laughs> However, let's look at some counters to this. Uh, the panel that I mentioned where the calendar has no Sunday, it is possible that it was just cut out of frame because it looks like a Japanese calendar, but that the Sunday section isn't visible. That doesn't mean it's missing completely though. There's also a panel where Denji straight up says he gets Sundays off. And there's also the anime <laughs> where there's a shot of Angel Devil staring off into the sky with what looks like rays of sun shining down. And granted, Angel is placed directly in front of the sun, so we don't actually see it to confirm that there's a sun in the universe, but I wouldn't put it past Mappa to have done this intentionally because they knew of this theory, because they're with the shits. I don't know, I don't know if I actually believe this theory. I do think it's fun. I'm just not fully convinced. Next up, Reze and Darkness Devil are connected. I hate to do this to y'all, but this is another one that I just couldn't find a single fucking thing. And the creator of the iceberg, where this point came from, didn't specify. I've not seen any Reddit threads theorizing about this, no fan sites. The Darkness Devil and Reze wiki pages do not mention each other at all. I do not know. This is one of the very few where it's like, not only did the iceberg creator not say anything, but searching for this point online doesn't even bring me anything remotely similar. So I'm sorry, but I don't know. Next up, 
lost one shots. I've mentioned one shots before, but I didn't actually tell you what a one shot is. So just so we're all on the same page, a one shot is like a short story. It's mainly a fan fiction term, but it can expand beyond that, obviously. But it's like a story that's self contained. It's one chapter, basically. From what I could find, there's been one official Chainsaw Man one shot by Fujimoto titled Just Listen to the Song, but we aren't talking about that. We're talking about lost one shots. When I looked into this, I found out that there are a few one shots from Fujimoto that are online, like on Fujimoto's fandom dot com page and like other like author bios and wiki pages manga fan sites stuff like that but the works themselves aren't there just the titles the one shots in question are called paper planes and sense of justice and when searching for these titles you can find them and like one screenshot per work but the one shot itself isn't there. It's just not there. And as I was looking into this, I also found out that there's actually a third missing one shot called Swords of Revenge, which similarly to the others only has one screenshot of a panel and you can't find the story anywhere. The streets are saying that these works have never been published and weren't made to be published since they were made for a competition. So other than Fujimoto, the only people intended to see them were the editors and judges. Um, but by the streets, I do mean Reddit. So take it with a grain of salt. But it's the only real lead we have on them, and it's looking like we won't see these works for a while, if we ever do see them. Next point in the iceberg, Bill Clinton is an important character. This stems from a bit in chapter 75 where a faceless man in the Oval Office of the White House is on the phone with someone and he's telling them that they need to kill Makima. And this is actually where it's revealed that Makima is the control devil because we knew by now that she was more than meets the eye and that she was secretly a villain. But up until that point, we didn't know exactly who or what she was. And as we've previously established, Chainsaw Man is set in 1997. And who is the president in 1997? Bill Clinton. Now, why is he considered an important character? Because, this is so crazy, the person that Bill was on the phone with was the gun devil and they were making a deal. So Bill Clinton offered one year off of the life of every American if the gun devil kills Makima, which leads to the second ever gun devil appearance and attack. So that's why Bill Clinton is an important figure in the Chainsaw Man universe other than like the fact that he's a president. <laughs> Next up, part three, question mark. So I said this earlier in the video, uh, the story of Chainsaw Man is split into parts, which are defined by the major arcs in the story. First one is the public safety arc. Part two is the school arc. So part three, question mark, is just some speculations about the third part. Uh, first of which is actually whether or not there's going to be a third part since Tatsuki Fujimoto has yet to say that there will be one. The jury is split on this one since Fire Punch, his previous manga, was in three parts uh, and people like when things come in threes. Isn't there like a saying like good things come in threes or something? But some fans think that the second part will be the final part since Fujimoto seems like he always wants to try new things and make new works rather than being tied to one super long story. I can't throw my hat in since again, I haven't read part two, but those that have say that with the way the story's going, unless Denji dies or retires, there would have to be a third part. Um, and I also found a screenshot of a quote that's allegedly apparently from Fujimoto that says that Chainsaw Man has three big climaxes, which assumably means three parts. It's hard to say what the plot of part three would be since part two is still being released as I speak. So it really depends on the ending of part two. There's some speculation about Nayuta's role, about a time skip, about defeating the remaining horsemen of the apocalypse, but it's all theory and up in the air and things are assumably going to get clearer as we near the end of part two. And that brings us to the last point in the bottom of the iceberg, what the darkness devil said to violence devil. This is supposed to say violence fiend, not devil. I'm sorry, don't hit me. I'm literally just a little guy. So what darkness devil said to violence is referencing chapter 65 of Chainsaw Man. No freaking way. It's in volume eight. I'm so glad I've just had this on my desk the whole time. That's awesome. It's in the section where the main gang and some antagonists are sent to hell. Violence tells Kobeni to take his mask off so he's at full strength to fight the darkness devil. So he goes to attack the darkness devil and when he does the darkness devil says this weird symbol thing and violence gets like obliterated. Hold on let me show let me pull it up. This is the symbol. I will also put it 
on the screen so it's clearer. But yeah, that's that. So what is this symbol? It's not any real language in real life and doing an image search on it comes up with literally nothing similar to it. Um, I did find a website that has a bunch of ancient like symbols and runes and stuff as well as their meanings. And there were some similar shapes, but nothing that I felt confident enough to say like, yes, this is that. I will link the site I used if someone wants to take a crack at it. It's a bit difficult because the thing that darkness says is essentially just a few overlapping symbols. So it's hard to determine like where one ends and the other starts, at least for me though. Um, but back to the question at hand, what darkness said to Arai, although I don't have a translation, I think contextually it's clear that it was some sort of command or spell since he says it and then violence is immediately filled with giant holes. So yeah, y'all, we are here. The final level of the iceberg, which I will be calling dark waters. Super creative, I know. We've got five points floating around this layer. Let's fucking do this. First up, Fujimoto self-insert. So I mentioned earlier that Makimura is based on a real girl that bullied Fujimoto, but he liked it. And that was true. But going one step further, Denji is also based on a real person, kind of. Tatsuki Fujimoto. <laughs> Fujimoto has several characters through all of his work that are self-inserts and or inspired by people and things happening in his current life. And I don't think he's explicitly said that Denji is a self-insert, but many readers and fans have put it together given what we know about Fujimoto compared to how Denji acts as a character. Plus, with it being confirmed that Makima was based off of a bully and Fujimoto liked it when she was mean to him, points to it as Denji has feelings for Makima despite how she treats him. Next up, the Makima metaphor. Ooh, slightly ominous name. <laughs> that was just my way of shortening a point from one of the icebergs I used to create mine. The full point from that iceberg reads, Makima is an analog for a PDF file and A-B-U-S-I-V-E, woman. And the chainsaw devil is just a metaphor for her ideal man. Let's unpack that. I actually fully believe this for several reasons, not just the obvious, which is that Makima's body is of an adult and Denji is a minor, but beyond just the ages, there's the clear power imbalances between them, the way Makima manipulates Denji through both threats and flirts, and the fact that Makima never actually saw Denji as Denji, but only as the chainsaw devil. Makima is terrible. But she's also a really great villain, and the way that Fujimoto writes her, as well as the relationship between her and Denji, is just really well done, in my opinion. Um, I had to take a second to say that while on the topic. The next point is Pachita could erase the fear of death. This one is slightly self-explanatory, since earlier in the video I discussed how the Chainsaw Devil could eat other devils in Hell, which erases their name, and the fear's existence in the world of Chainsaw Man. So with that information, we know that this can be applied to any devil since there haven't been any canon exceptions to it. So yeah, with that knowledge, you can understand why Pachita could theoretically erase the fear of death and also could erase death entirely. Damn. <laughs> Next up, war, hunger, and death devils, question mark. This is something that we also kind of already touched on. Sorry, information just tends to overlap when talking about the same thing for 39 straight pages of script. But yes, there are devils for the four horsemen of the apocalypse, and we know that Makima is one of them. But what about the other three? Well, two of them actually appear in part two. The war devil debuts in chapter 98, which is the first chapter of part two. Yaru is the name of the war devil, and she is in another character, Asa Mitaka's body as a fiend, and she is like the main villain antagonist for part two. And the Famine or Hunger Devil debuts in chapter 108 of the manga, going by the name Fami. Fami poses as a student at Denji School and is a member of the Devil Hunting Club. And that's all I know about her because I don't particularly want to spoil part two for myself more than what's necessary. As for the Death Devil, we have yet to see it so far, but we do know that it's alive and I assume it will come up at some point and conspiracy theory moment. Maybe it'll be the main antagonist for part three since they've already introduced two horsemen in part two. I think it would honestly be a lot to throw in the death devil in part three, no, in part two. But also, as we know, I haven't read part two, so maybe contextually it'll make sense if they do that. 
but I don't know. I just trust that Fujimoto has something good cooking. <sighs> so now we are at the last point in the iceberg, which I honestly want to kind of laugh at because as I was making the iceberg, I didn't realize just how much pretext and context was needed for certain things. So we've already discussed this, but the final point is that Makima is one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. What? No way. It's not like I just got done talking about that. I'm not explaining this point because I literally already have. I'm sorry for maybe not organizing this in the most efficient way as possible. Hindsight is 2020. This is the first time I made an iceberg. That's my iceberg. Again, huge thank you to the creators of the three icebergs that I use to make my iceberg. Reddit users 7 guild shark Mr. HTuberYT, and ScaryMonster721 because this video literally wouldn't be possible without them. Um, thank you for watching. This is my longest video script to date, and it took so fucking long to write. It took weeks to write, and I don't even want to think about how long this video is going to turn out or how long it's going to take to edit. But please like the video. <laughs> like, seriously, despite how tiring uh, this project kind of was, I really enjoyed making it, and I really, really hope it's received well. Um, but yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, like the video. If you like the video, comment on the video. And if you like the video, subscribe to the video maker. Also, follow my Instagram for more cosplay shit if you want. Okay. Thank you and goodbye. And also, Happy New Year. Because this is coming out either the 30th or the 31st. So, Happy New Year. Last video of 2022. It makes sense that this is my last video if you really think about it. Bye. <laughs>